this is not for compressible flow isentropic convergent divergent nozzle flow so in this topic we will uh, study about how to derive an equation a lot a set of equation to solve a compressible flow for divergent and divergent nozzle flow so uh, before we go for the derivation I would like to so to show you uh, the convergent divergent what we uh, call as convergent and di divergent is we have one section converging like this and then we have a, a very small cross-section area here we call it throat and then this cross-section area again will increase and we call it as a diverging section so this design is similar with a uh, venturi meter i think you still remember what is venturi meter because we learned about it uh, in uh, fluid mechanics one very well so what is the usage of a converging section is <coughs> so we have a convergent divergent nozzle here so what uh, and then we have a, a reservoir of uh, gas here so or mean in real application we connect convergent divergent nozzle with a compressor with an air compressor here and then we compress an air we release that air to the converging section and then when the cross section is become lower and lower as you know the basic idea of Bernoulli equation the velocity will increase and if your uh, condition here is not compressible means that the flow is not so high in velocity so after the gas here through go through the throat area so the cross-section area become larger again and for incompressible so the velocity will decrease because the cross-section is increased as we explained previously if our speed is more than 0 0.3 Mach number the phenomenon that occur is compressible flow so let's say we have a high pressure here and it could flow gas here more than 0 0.3 Mach number so means uh, it is a compressible flow so uh, when the conversion here the cross-section area is uh, become smaller and smaller the velocity will increase and at throat here the velocity will reach mark number one so this is the common phenomena in converging and convergent divergent nozzle so means that if you have a question about convergent divergent nozzle you may take mark number equal to one in throat area and then if you keep give more pressure or keep increase the velocity the velocity in throat here will not increase uh, more than one so what happened actually here is the molecule of gas here is start to compress itself mean instead of changing itself from lower velocity to higher velocity one it's reach mark number one it cannot be it cannot flow furthermore in throat it means the gas molecule will remain velocity as mark number one so what happened here if you give more velocity or give more pressure the density of the gas here is start to compress so means that the molecule distance between the uh, air uh, between the gas the molecule gas is start to uh, stay in close contact to each other so means that the density here will increase and increase and increase so and then after when the flow go to the diverging section here so what happened uh, we know that we could imagine that we need more energy or high energy to compress the the molecule of gas to to uh, shorten its distance molecule distance so mean that that high energy after that when the uh, gas uh, flow in diverging section that energy will help or will 
uh, will push the velocity in diverging section into higher velocity. So in diverging section, the gas, the energy that uh, compress the density will release into its velocity. So it could push, it could make flow in diverging section more than Mach number one. So we call this one as supersonic flow because the Mach number is more than one in the exit. This is the usage of convergent divergent nozzle. So mean it's uh, the the basic idea is to create flow more than Mach number one. However, most researchers want uh, an exit velocity exit Mach number one. However, the presence of shock wave, later on we will learn about shock wave here, may lower this velocity. There are also other factors that can cause the exit velocity to not reach supersonic velocity. And this is the example in real application, the diverging nozzle, especially used in rocket engine here, or the converging nozzle that used in engine of uh, jet. So the idea is to get flow more than Mach number one, Mach one. And this is the convergent divergent nozzle again, the, the real part of uh, convergent divergent nozzle. And uh, this is what I want to say here is this is the convergent divergent nozzle. So it has a special design. So and then when we give a high pressure here, so the high pressure will convert into high velocity in the nozzle, in the, in the throat here, so it could reach Mach number one. As you could see here, the line will show it is Mach number one. And then after this, so the all researchers want to have Mach number more than one in divergent side, diverging section here. How it depends on the design, it depends on type of gas, it design on the existence of shock wave. So if, for example, we have a shock wave inside the nozzle here, or at the end, at the exit, or at the end of the divergent nozzle here, so we will not have mark number one because the existence of shock wave will reduce the velocity at the same time will give you mark number less than one that's why uh, we could see here that if the design is not properly designed so the curve will have will not reach mark number one and then it will go here so around a and b area is the subsonic flow and then if we could reach mark number one, it depends on our luck actually. If you could maintain the curve here and then the shock wave, for example, is not occur or the shock wave will occur at uh, outside of the nozzle, so you will have mark number one, mark number more than one. But if you have shock wave here in region D, for example, the shock wave occur inside the nozzle. So at the exit here, you will not have mark, now, mark 1. So this is another chart to show the same uh, idea, which uh, at the throat here, the mark number should equal to 1. And then it's go to the diverging section here, and then it depends. Sometimes it could reduce to the subsonic flow, so means that it might be uh, we have a design faulty of uh, a lot of parameter will uh, influence this or we could have a supersonic here okay and uh, we have a, a shock wave to reduce it back and in shock wave we have two uh, type of shock wave so we have a normal shock wave which is perpendicular to the flow and or to the object or to the oblique shock wave which has a certain uh, incline angle uh, we will learn about normal shock wave up uh, in the next uh, lesson. So, I hope you could uh, read a little bit from your textbook the idea of convergent divergent nozzle. So, the most important thing is in convergent divergent nozzle is in throat we need to have mark one, and then we need to do something to make sure that after the converging section we could get velocity more than mark one. 
So as the revision for today, uh, for this uh, lesson, I would like to compare or give you a table, conclusion about uh, what you need to know in compressible flow and incompr incompressible flow and compressible flow. So for incompressible flow, the density is constant. So means uh, uh, we will use a value of density is constant and it's normally uh, usage for liquid. For compressible flow, the density changes. So it's uh, normally used or the uh, in our syllabus we will focus in gas flow only. So and then if we compare in Mach number, we could say that uh, velocity less than 0 0.3 Mach number, Mach, Mach 0 0.3, so we could say that it is and incomp incompressible flow. However, if our speed is more than 0 0.3 Mach number, so we need to assume that dens density has changed and we need to calculate them by using compressible flow equation. So normally in incompressible flow, we keep using the SI standard of speed meter per second. However, in compressible flow, in high speed, we normally use the idea of not number means we compare the velocity with the speed of sound and again I would like to remind you that speed of sound will change according to type of gas because you have a gas constant here and then you have the specific ratio here and then it depends on temperature so means that you need to be alert sometimes the altitude will change the temperature sometimes it stay on sea level but you give you heat up the uh, inlet so the temperature is increased then you will get a different uh, speed of sound so and then in compressible flow we are using this one volume flow rate a1 v1 is equal to a2 v2 and the unit is meter cube per second however in compressible flow because the density changes so we need to put term of density in our continuity equation so we must use mass flow rate so the equation is rho 1 a1 v1 equal rho 2 a2 v2 so rho is the density a is the cross section and v is the velocity of fluid so and then in incompressible flow we are using Bernoulli equation this one I hope you still remember Bernoulli equation to solve a, uh, about get about moving flow about flow so we have a pressure here we have a velocity and we have z the potential energy however in compressible flow it is incorrect it is totally wrong to solve compressible flow problems by using Bernoulli equation please remember this one please do not solve your compressible flow by using Bernoulli equation yes it has uh, density terms here but you cannot use you cannot change this density into row 1 and row 2 the row here is constant with the value of p1 v1 z1 will change into p2 v2 z2 but the value of row here is remain constant we don't have any row 1 and row 2 in Bernoulli equation so what we need to know, uh, do is we need to derive a set of equation and then we need to use that equation to solve any problem in compressible flow so after this we will go for derivation of that equation